This is the Legislative Committee meeting on September 11th, 2014. Um, before we get started, I know this is not typical, but as it is the uh, anniversary of 9-11-2001, I would like to ask that we stand and maybe Nancy, could you lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance? So further, I uh, would just like to ask that we dedicate this meeting to those individuals that perished um, in, in nine, at 9-11 and also those individuals, public servants that came to their assistance, to the families and friends, and um, maybe just take a, a 30 second moment of silence for in remembrance. Thank you. All right, uh, let's begin with a call to order and quorum count here. Um, will the September 11th, 2014 Legislative Committee of the Contractor State License Board come to order? I'm Joan Hancock, committee chair. Since this meeting has a teleconference location, I'd like to remind board members to please state your name prior to making a comment. In addition, any item requiring a vote will require a roll call vote. All right, so if we uh, announce ourselves here, starting with you, Nancy, and then we'll go out to the audience. Nancy Springer, board member. Steve Sands, registrar. Joan Hancock, board member. Laura Zuniga, chief of legislation. Linda Clifford, board member. David Fote, chief of enforcement. Rick Lopes, chief of public affairs. Go ahead, Paul. Paul Shafino, board member. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ed. Sharon Robinson, Chief of Licensing. Thank you, Chuck. I see. Ed Rieger from North Temperate News. Rick Pierce, Casey Crafts, Phil Vermeule, and Terry Desmond Jr. I'm missing. Oh, Tom Rivera, Public Affairs. Sorry, Nancy. Thank you. And um, I believe. Augie Beltram has an excused absence this morning, could not be here, uh, board member Augie. Um, are there any comments from board members at this, or committee members at this time? Well, I just wanna welcome all of you. Thank you, uh, thank you Paul for tuning in. Uh, thank you Nancy, I know uh, your schedule is pretty busy lately and Linda and I want to also um, assure the public that you couldn't have a better committee at this time. Um, and I am very pleased to follow in Paul Shafina's footsteps with his guidance uh, as chair of this committee. Um, we're going to move to agenda item B, and those are the advisory notes on public comments. Uh, this item is provided for public comment pertaining to items on the agenda as well as items not on the agenda. Our board cannot take any action on items not listed on the agenda. The CSLB welcomes public comment on any item on the agenda and it's the CSLB's intent to ask for public comment prior to taking action on any agenda item. But if for some reason we forget to ask for a public comment on an agenda item, a member of the public desiring to comment on the item should raise their hand and they will be recognized. We will be limiting public comment to five minutes per individual. Uh, at this time, are there any individuals that would like to address the board? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move to uh, agenda item C, the legislative program update. Uh, Chief of Legislation, Laura Zuniga, will provide the update. Thank you. Thank you. 
I have in the packet um, a spreadsheet of the most significant legislation we're tracking for this year. Um, I'll give a, the legislature adjourned for the year at the end of August, so the governor has until September 30th to take action on any legislation that's pending on his desk. Um, I'm just gonna highlight a couple of the bills that were the most significant. Um, AB 70, 1702 by Assemblymember Manshine was a bill the board took a watch position on uh, relating to allowing a person who satisfies requirements for licensure while in prison to allow that to qualify um, for experience. The bill, as amended, did not end up impacting CSLB. Um, that bill did make it to the governor's desk. Uh, AB 2396 by Assemblymember Bonta, the board uh, took an opposed position on. It provides that boards cannot consider expunged convictions. Um, for purposes of whether or not to deny a license. So the board was opposed. The bill did make it to the governor's desk um, and is currently pending. And then our one sponsored bill this year was SB 315 by Senator Liu. It had several provisions in there authorizing uh, enforcement representatives to access um, job sites um, when participating in joint enforcement strike force activities. Uh, makes it a misdemeanor for a person to act as a contractor um, under a suspended license, and then um, provides that someone who's not licensed may only advertise for work that is under the limit for licensure, $500. So that bill is also on the governor's desk. That's our board sponsored bill. Yes. Right. Any questions? Any questions? Anyone want to comment on any of these, uh, on the status of any of these or any history? S Madam Chair, the second one that you said that we opposed, it did make it to the it governor's, uh, mm -hmm. this, so. There were several boards that were opposed to it. I think uh, Board of Psychology, Board of Behavioral Sciences, Respiratory Care Board. I don't think the Department of Consumer Affairs, Affairs ended up taking a formal position on the bill, um, so, but we have communicated our concerns to them as well as to the governor's office. So it may or may not get signed. Right. Okay. That moves us to agenda item D, review of the sunset, um, sunset review report. And... Um, Why don't you go ahead and start, and then um, my my um, because I I know we all have a lot of comments on the, we have three recommendations here, and there may be other things that aren't here that um, are coming up, but uh, since they haven't been noticed, I'm not really sure that we can talk about them uh, at this time. But because we all have been uh, troubled by. Uh, some of these recommendations and the language. Uh, Laura asked uh, or sent out soft copies of what we had come up with as our proposed um, uh, draft for the Sunset Review and sent them out to everyone to uh, for comments. And since Laura Zuniga heads the legislative committee, she sent out uh, drafts on these th three recommendations that are in this book for us committee members to comment on. Um, I know Linda spent a lot of time uh, doing some word by word. Some of it has to do with uh, just wordsmithing and some of it is actually um, uh, goes to the substance. And I know Paul, you're out there, Paul Schifino. Yes, I, this is Paul. Good morning. I forgot to say good morning. <coughs> Welcome. Um, I know that you have worked uh, considerably on this. So I don't want to go word by word, but I, my MO here would be to maybe just go, you know, paragraph on, by paragraph on substance only. If there's an issue related to style and format or wordsmithing, my suggestion at this time would be to uh, appoint a subcommittee to work with Laura for, towards a final draft. And if you're in agreement, maybe after comments as we go through this, then we'll, we could um, 
visit that and I'll select two people to serve on a subcommittee for perhaps uh, we'll divide it up into two committees. One that would uh, work with Laura on recommendation number one and maybe some uh, two other people that would work with Laura on recommendations two and three. So that is my proposal and with that I would like uh, Laura, why don't you just um, go ahead and start going through this? Sure, and um, if I can, maybe I'll just um, back up for just a minute to say that um, Steve had sent out the report, the, the comprehensive sunset review report to all the members a few weeks ago, and I think with um, these recommendations attached. So I, um, today I think we're just discussing the recommendations and not the body of the report itself. So these are rec uh, the reason that, that we had, um, drafted these recommendations were thought this would be an opportunity to bring to the legislature's attention some issues uh, with CSLB statute that um, either we have been unsuccessful in on our own or just as an opportunity to bring their attention to issues we think need to be reviewed um, by the legislature. So um, in the packet there are the three separate recommendations. Um, so we can go, maybe we should start with um, we could start with 7031, if you'd like. That's the first yeah, one in the packet. Yeah, let's start there. And um, the board sponsored legislation in uh, 2013 um, to try to amend S uh, Section 7031 relating to disgorgement. We were not successful. We had um, issues in the Senate Judiciary Committee. They have concerns about um, amending this provision. They see it as an important consumer protection. Um, I think it's important for contractors to maintain their license at all times. So, um, but it does still appear to be an issue. It is raised quite a bit and brought to the board's attention. Um, so provided some background on the issue to continue to raise, to raise it to the legislature's attention. Linda. Thank you. Um, so in realizing that bringing this forward wasn't perceived as being something that was necessarily our, uh, um, our fight, um, but we still have a lot of concerns about this. Right. We aren't necessarily recommending the board sponsor any of these proposals. They're just a way to bring them to the legislature's attention that they are something that we think the legislature needs to be aware of and consider. Um, not suggesting at this point the board sponsor them as legislation. Right. So when I looked at the three of them, I looked at them a little bit differently than each other. In other words, 7031 we already tried, we, we took a run at and we weren't successful in doing <clears throat> doing that. So what I thought was um, if we made that more of an advisory rather than a recommendation, in other words, we're not necessarily fighting this fight, what we're saying is that there's a problem out there and this is what we perceive the problem is. And rather than suggest a language change or anything else, just say, you know, the punishment doesn't fit the crime and this isn't necessarily protecting consumers the way you think it is. And so um, I, I went through and made recommendations in that, you know, I see two and three as being things that we really want to push through and we really want to get done and we could carry the ball on those because they, they clearly would be seen as something that would be appropriate for, for CSLB to be the fighter, you know, to be the champion of. This, on the other hand, maybe we just need to set the stage for someone else to come along and be the champion. In other words, someone who is uh, a contractor or an organization or association could carry the legislation. Um, with the understanding that we do agree that some changes need to be made. I, I would like to just comment on something that you just said, and that is um, on page two of the, let's see, if you go down to the paragraph that starts, however, um, committee staff requested examples of problems with the current, it's the very last sentence, or the, mm -hmm. The current law that would be remedied by the proposed amendments, which the industry could not document. So, you know, my question is why, and this was when the idea of a subcommittee um, came up, and um, and I think this would be something that would be um, 
needed to, I, you know, I think we would need some information. And I, this to me falls a little short. I'm not trying to wordsmith. I'm not trying to reorganize this or make a comment. I just would like to see more information as to why that happened. Um, Steve. Yeah, to, to clarify uh, quite a few things. Um, 7031 was sponsored by the by the board. All, all these facts are true. It was also included in the strategic plan. Um, the board has already decided to make this an issue uh, that it wants to wants to follow. Um, and we are, in fact, uh, continually, like we mentioned at the other committee meetings, to rewrite the recommendation part of the report. And we are taking more of an approach, Linda, like. Uh, these are issues that we would like to work with the legislature on in the future. Um, I have been working with committee staff and Senator Monning's office who, you have to understand that the use 7031 as an example, just because you try and fail once doesn't mean you give up. I mean, like Senator Monning said, you know, sometimes you have to do it three, four, five times until uh, you, till you educate the staff and you bring everyone together. Now, the reason 7031 was put in here was because, again, the board had already identified it as an issue it wants to, to continue with. And now, this committee can make any recommendations to the board at once. However, I want to point out, if it's different, you've already got three committees who are recommending approval of this, so the board will have to hash that out at the September board meeting. As far as the subcommittee is concerned, there. Um, I'd have to check with legal to see if the committee member, the committee chair, can create a subcommittee. Whether that's up to the board chair, but well, we don't. Can I stop you for a second? Sure. When you say we have three committees that are mm -hmm. already recommending approval of this, you mean these legislative recommendations? No, the licensing committee, the public affairs committee, and the enforcement committee. And they're they're approving it as is, or just because there's been no comment about it. Well, there was lots of comment about it at the committee meetings. So, again, the committees make recommendations to the board to approval of the report with the, with the recommendation, with, with the knowledge that staff would continue to work, well, we call it recommendations or, or identification of issues. So the bottom line is the board's going to have to decide in two weeks what to do with the sunset report. And um, the Quite frankly, I don't think that there's any time for any more subcommittees or, or whatever. Again, you know, it's, those are board decisions. If you wanna, want us to look into that, we certainly will. But I wanna make sure the board understands where we are in the process, what's been done in the past, and what the board's position has been up to, to this point in time. I don't know if I made it more confusing or, or less, but I just wanna, you under, understand what the what the groundwork is right now as of today. So, so my comment about that is we have a new legislative committee with all new members with the exception of Paul and um, some of these uh, uh, committee members have um, issued a need to weigh in on this and that's why I suggested a subcommittee. A lot of the work has been done up to now. Uh, thank you, Linda uh, Clifford um, for um, responding um, and in such detail and uh, it seems like your response is what's on the table right now and a subcommittee is something that could be done in very short order. Um, I don't know when we have to go to print on our board packet or um, we've, we've noticed the meeting but um, I don't see what harm it would do to add or detract or take away from something that's already in um, the packet. I don't know if the packet's been printed at this time. To clarify, it's not the packet. The notice goes out tomorrow. Um, I'd recommend go ahead and vet your issues and see if, if the committee wants to vote to to see how the committee feels on these recommendations, the report and the subcommittee idea, and then we'll check with legal and, and David to see what we can and can't do between now and the, and, and the board meeting. So 
that that's a good idea. But um, has the um, board meeting packet been printed, finished? Is it in process? Is it where is it? No, it's not the packet. It's the notice that that has to be out tomorrow. We'll be working the next week or so. Yeah, but we're not trying talking packet. about changing the notice. We're talking about changing the verbiage in 7031, right? Correct, but again, if the committee's going to have a recommendation to the board, it has to be properly noticed. For example, if, if the committee has a recommendation that's counter to the other three committees, it would have to say, uh, review and approval of committee recommendation to amend uh, the proposal on 7031 or whatever the committee decides. I'm just trying to explain the logistics uh, to you and I would like to add that you know the report I'm has not sure are you saying that the other committees are trumping what the legislative committee sitting here today is proposing to do not at all I'm simply saying that if you do something different it'll be different from the other committees you have that absolute right sure well those committees I presumably are working on their committee issues and we're, com we're working on this particular committee issue as a uh, because it's a a legislative committee Rick, can I issue. Talk? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is this is Paul chiming in. Um, Steve, if I if I could ask you a question, w what I'm hearing is a logistical issue that if we have a subcommittee that makes some decisions, there's no time to have the ledge committee <coughs> chime in or decide to accept whatever the subcommittee would propose in time for the next board meeting. Is that what you're saying? Correct, although you said it much better than I did. Okay, so, okay, so that, that at least I understand. Well, I thought that's why we were here today, was to, to do that very thing, which was why I suggested that we review some of these um, ideas and recommendations, whether it ends up in the board packet or whether it could be submitted as an amendment at the board meeting, an amendment to what is in that board packet at our next board meeting. I mean, I don't, I don't care. But these, it seems like this is valuable information. Um, we've worked pretty. Some of us have worked pretty hard on our responses. And go ahead, Paul. Okay, ahead, thanks. Paul. Um, th this is Paul again. Um, Steve, the the committees are set up at the least for the board. So uh, why couldn't? A, a, as long as it's agended appropriately, why couldn't the subcommittee just chime in and, at, at the board meeting and say, here's where we are, um, here's what we come up with, and there's a board vote? Why, does it, why do we have to have the ledge committee chime in and say, okay, we hereby approve it, and then, then the ledge committee as a whole is going to present it to the board? You know, you're probably right, Paul. I mean, that is technically possible. If, if we can provide written information up to the morning of the board board meeting, so that's, that's not the issue. Uh, my only concern is the notice right now. So again, I, I think a committee ought to decide what it wants and we'll figure out a, the best way to, to do it. Notice, uh, it. Again, sorry Rick, chime in, this is Paul again, but the, the notice is simple, right? I mean, there's not a lot to the notice, it's just, just the notice. The, the language is, is short and brief and it's not specific language to what we're proposing. Well again, it would, do, I'm sorry, this is Steve. It just depends on what the committee comes up with. But I'm sure we can work, work it out so it'll, so it'll work. Go ahead, uh, Laura. Uh, maybe just to summarize, I, think, I don't think we have a significant difference in the fact that we want the report to go forward and recommendations. If, even if we're going to wordsmith some of the recommendations, it's still the same issues that are going forward. So I would think we could continue um, to work on that to get it in the board packet or even, even separate from the board packet, but to have it ready for the board to consider at the September meeting. Um, and staff can continue to make uh, modifications as we normally do for anything that's in the board packet. So I think, I think we're all on the same page with the issues we want to go forward. We, we just need to get them in the right format, and I think we can continue to do that um, after today's meeting if we have more comments. But Linda provided very sensitive comments on all three issues. None of the other um, committees had any changes to the recommendations. So can, can I do yeah. just a minute? Okay. Linda. So 
um, you know, because I'm, I'm the head of the licensing committee, when we got the sunset report, I mean, my understanding was we got it with the understanding it was still a work in progress and that we would get the final report at the September meeting or, be, you know, before uh, to review and then it would be approved with changes or modifications or whatever at that mm -hmm. September meeting. So I don't feel like the committee's necessarily said, this is the final product, we're approving it and telling the board to approve it. Basically what mm -hmm. I understood was, it's still in process. There's things being added to it and, and changes being made. And I think that all the legislative committee wants to do at this point, uh, Madam Chair, is that we're recommending that nothing stop with the sunset report, that we would just like to see some modifications mm -hmm. in the recommendations if possible. And, and that seems timely it, I mean, it would have been great we met three weeks ago, whatever, but I mean, we didn't and we're meeting now and we're still ahead of that. And the notice, it didn't seem like the notice had changed because at the end of the day, it's gonna be a recommendation for the sunset report to go forward as approved by the board. And that would be with or without modification, right? Is that correct, Laura? That, that's how I saw it. And that's the, the suggestion of a subcommittee was just to you know have people that are actually on this legislative committee that have been you know, working on this to work with Laura to come up with, you know, hey, we think this or we think that. It, uh, yeah, I think it, it could be submitted at the board meeting and uh, we could vote on whether to uh, to accept it, you know, it, uh, amend what is on the agenda for the board meeting and which I would hope would include um, the proposed language for our uh, sunset review document to be submitted in November and um, work with Laura on that with the provisio that you know we really want this to go forward it may not go you know for a, a year or two years or however it happens we're, we're we want some of these changes to um, be effective and we want a clean document and we want fairness and um, I think that's all we're proposing it doesn't have to change the criteria for the board meeting. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that we, um, I think two people should work on this. And I think Paul, you've done a lot of, of work on it already. And Linda has done a lot of work on it already. And I'd like to ask the two of you to work with Laura further to just clean up uh, some of this verbiage and, um, and it won't be the final it won't be the final document and maybe do it by um, um, just an amendment, it, which does not have to be recognized other than by uh, committee at the board meeting. Would you accept that appointment? Uh, Paul? Rick, uh, Rick, if you got me on the speaker, this is Paul Shafino, and yes, would love to work on that, and thank you. And Madam Linda, Chair. would you do that as well, and work with Laura between, we're gonna have to do this like right away, if, right. within the next few days, so you'd have to be willing to, you know, do this fairly quickly. Right. Yeah, this is, a, yes, I, I'd be willing to do this, and Paul's been sent all of this, so actually, you know, Paul could respond to whether he feels we're on the right track or, or not, I think the real question is, how's 7031 going to be approached, right? Is it gonna be a recommendation or is it gonna be an advisory? Because if it's a recommendation, you might wanna leave all this language in here for how you might wanna change it. Or if it's gonna be advisory, maybe it's just a short, a much shorter one page mm -hmm. advisory. Um, if I can, sure. I think um, as we discussed it further at the staff level, we talked about including a summary document of these issues as, you know, as maybe a page or two pages kind of summarizing the issues that we have. And then the language, the background could be an attachment to that with more background information. Um, I think all of them should probably be presented as issues rather than recommendations. I think that's a good point for all of them because we're not at this point proposing the board sponsor any of these as legislation. So these are just issues we wanna raise bring to the legislature's attention, and then if anything further comes of it, we would go through whatever process we need to. Uh, uh, go ahead, Paul. Uh, hi, this is Paul Shafino again. Uh, just in, in brief, I'd just suggest after the meeting today, if, if uh, Laura and Linda and I can just get on the phone, um, we can just do this after the meeting, and, and then we can move on, if that makes sense to you guys. Laura, are you yes. good with that? Yes, yeah, we can do that. Linda, do you have time to do that? Yes, I, I, have, I have time to do that. And I guess the question would be, 
what what do you want to come out of this is whatever we come out with to be uh, incorporated with Laura and Steve into the sunset report as the recommendation from the legislative for that portion of the report? Is that what we're thinking? I mean, Steve, is that what you're thinking? I, well, I, I think, again, Laura, Laura and I are still working on the whole issue paper. And, you know, the mm -hmm. in retrospect, this whole discussion was probably much ado about nothing, and I apologize for that. I, I was hearing that you wanted to withdraw one of the recommendations. That's what I was, I must have mis misheard that, so I apologize for that. So anyway, I think we, this will be easy to, to work out and figure out. I think we uh, already had come to the same conclusions that, that you, you brought up, and, and we're doing the same, the same thing. Issues that we think the legislature administration should look at in the future as part of the sunset report. And, you know, Laura and I were kicking around, maybe next year the board wants to have public hearings on all these issues. There's all sorts of things that the board could do to, to educate the industry, to educate the legislature. It's just identifying issues that the legislature requested that, that we would hope that the administration and the legislature will look at in the future. So I. I after hearing the discussion, I think we're all on the same page, and I understand much better now what, you, what you're all trying to get at. How about some public comment? Anyone in the public, uh, in the nosebleeds back there, want to make a comment about? Uh, well, uh, now that I've asked, which is my duty. Hi, Phil Vermeulen. Uh, this has been an issue that's been near and dear to my heart for a long time. Uh, prior to the board's legislation, which we actively were involved with, uh, I had Assemblyman Bill Berryhill carry a bill for us on this, too. And uh, so I can't emphasize enough. I mean, we have some of the biggest contractors in the state. I know of one uh, who got burned for $25 million by the state of California, no less over this, where some smart attorneys for the state of California said, hey, they're not duly licensed because they changed their license. They had several licenses and they merged them together under one roof. The contract wasn't with that license number and it was a technicality. And that firm lost $25 million in the end. So this is a big issue. This is a life or death issue for contractors. And I can't emphasize enough that the board needs to be there just like it was with us with the Monning Bill uh, next session, and we need to go forward with this. I mean, I could give you the reasons, but I won't hear publicly now, but uh, there are people that were uh, entities that we need to overcome to get this thing through. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a very critical thing. It's a technical loophole that uh, smart, savvy people are using to not have to pay people, and that's not right. And uh, as that as recommendation suggests, you know, for the time that you're not duly licensed for a day or two days or whatever, okay, I get it. But to say, well, even though you, be, you were licensed the rest of the time and you did a good job on a project, why should you lose all your money? That's just robbery as far as I'm concerned. So on behalf of my clients, I can't emphasize enough that this is a very important issue. Thank you. Well, I asked for it, um, and, <laughs> and I got it, but um, that was a very interesting comment. And um, I, I did a little research myself, and, and there's, a, there's actually the federal government does not um, hold the same view on its um, projects that our state government does. And there was a case in April uh, of this year that was actually went to the Supreme Court which um, controverts the way that we see 7031 as a, I don't know if you read that, Paul, but um, it, ha it does not apply to contracts or uh, suppliers and contractors or not even the non-licensed because of the Miller Act. So um, uh, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of fuel, a lot of Fodder. I think everyone wants fairness, and um, this is going to be this this 
issue has been around for a very long time and we want to do it right and it's not going to happen overnight but it's it's great that the public is here and that we have the support of a great committee that wants to work on it and and do our part um, to make it fair for everyone and to uh, above all to protect our consumers and the public in the state of California that is our primary mission so that being said yes Paul hi this is Paul again um, hey uh, Phil I had a question for you in, in the sunset report just a quick one um, Laura has written in that the committee staff requested examples of problems it's on the bottom of the second page and and uh, Joan uh, chair referred to it earlier um, committee staff requested examples of problems with the current law that would be remedied by the proposed amendments which the industry could not document is that is that something Phil that you tried to get documentation for did you not try to get documentation for what 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 what's going on with that Paul this is Steve why don't you let me answer that what I actually talked to Linda about this and to AGC and part of the problem is that the uh, cases that we hear about they settle and the contractors don't want to make public the fact that they settle because I guess it puts them in some other kind of liability well, or something. It's a confidentiality agreement typically yeah. in the settlements. So although we we heard a lot of cases especially dealing with AGC it's really hard to come up with cases that would fit into the legislative remedy we're trying to put forward so I think that's part of the issue Phil do you that yeah sound I mean that was Paul you may recall we we were struggling trying to find people and we went to a lot of different attorneys asking them to provide us with clients and things like that I think also if we start now rather than in the heat of the legislative session if a bill is introduced I think it'll make our job a little easier because we're always under timelines trying to get stuff done for the committees and all of that, and it's just not a decent around, turnaround time. Okay. Um, Rick, if you chime in. Oh, um, cool. This is Paul again. All right, I, I, I just wanted to clarify that it's not that they, it, it's, they, they couldn't document because they, couldn't, they, they, they weren't able to get contractors to come forward and with a straight face tell the public, the, the entire world, oh, by the way, I wasn't licensed for four days two years ago because that would subject that contractor to every contract they worked on during those four days, the, the world would know they're not entitled to any money. So, so, Linda, Madam, Clifford. Yeah, so Madam Chair, this is, Lin, this is Linda. I, I don't see how the comment serves uh, any purpose for even being in the report. I mean, it's, a, it's anecdotal to a certain extent. And I think that part of what I did when I went through this was try to take away any opinions, you know what I mean? I tried to be very objective on all the recommendations, just basically focusing on the consumer, you know, focusing on this. And I think, you know, putting an anecdotal comment in there that may have, you know, we may have run up against something here or there, but, you know, there's reasons why that happened doesn't doesn't serve any purpose so I'd, I'd recommend that was one of the recommendations Paul will see it on there that 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 comment just comes out I'm, I'm good with that Linda and we can resolve that later as part of our right. subcommittee and that's beautiful perfect all right uh, is there any further discussion on this issue recommendation number one all right let's move on to I don't think we need to vote on this this is a subcommittee uh, we're in progress and thank you all for your participation thank you Phil um, recommendation number two Laura would you uh, sum up the history and how we got to this point and in very quick order It's an arbitration recommendation. Sorry. Um, we sponsored legislation last year on this as well, AB 993, by Assemblymember Linder. Um, we have a lot of technical changes to the arbitration statute that we were sponsoring, um, but the primary reason we uh, went forward with the legislation was due to the issue with attorney's fees um, in that we, the board found out, I guess maybe a year or two ago, that um, 
the party that either prevailed or lost in arbitration was then taking that judgment and going to um, civil court to get attorney's fees awarded on the basis of having an attorney represent them in arbitration. The practice in arbitration is not to have attorney's fees awarded, um, but because people were then going outside the arbitration process to seek attorney's fees and recovery, um, there's definitely more potential for consumer harm there, and there was a constituent of Senator Steinberg's that um, presented at the board and talked about her case where she had to pay out attorney's fees. So um, we tried to address that last year. We were not successful with the legislation, um, and we still think it's an issue, so that's why we suggest it be um, one of the issues attached to the Sunset Review Report. Linda Clifford. So I just wanted to speak to the few changes that I made on this. I made very few. They were m made mostly just the, some cleanup things and to, m and to address um, the concern related to the consumer. In other words, to, to continue to focus on the consumer. I did have one substantive change on page seven and that's where I took it from three calendar business calendar days to three business days. And you just can't, I mean, there's three day weekends. You could literally get out of, you know, you could lose your rights because you can't get to a court because there's no court open because it's a Sunday or a Monday or whatever. So I did feel that was the only substantive change. The rest of these are pretty minor. There was one question on paragraph one. I wasn't sure where, Laura, if you meant complaint through this process and if recommended Wh by the Where board. are you right now? I'm sorry, page one, item one, the mandatory arbitration, if the, right, should say this process and if recommended by the board. I'm not sure if that's oh, what you meant to say. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I didn't, I had so I don't know that this needs a, needs, I mean, it would be great if the committee felt comfortable with the kind of minor changes, the one substantive change to go to business days. If I could just note, the change that Linda's talking about to business days, that's a change to the statute rather than, I think our prior discussion has been changes to the issue of the paper. Um, so we can, that could be, um, if, if a bill goes forward, yeah, we can make that suggestion. Any other comment? Any, uh, Paul? Uh, no, thank you, no. So I am, you know, with no other comments, I'm not sure that we need to have a second subcommittee just dealing with this. Um, it really just seems like it is, um, I, you know, if it's going to go forward in our board book, I mean, the ver verbiage that's not highlighted is existing law, and then the highlighted is the changes that right. were. Could mm -hmm. you just make a note that, that says that? I know it's obvious. To sure. oh. us, but I don't know that it's obvious okay. to the public. And I can email out to the committee members um, after the meeting today what I provided, the soft copies of this from Linda, and then uh, make the changes after Paul and Linda and I discuss and get them out in an email version today or tomorrow. So you can <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Them. Okay, great. Uh, does the public wish to comment on this item on recommendation number two? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll move to recommendation number three, review and amend the contractor state license law to streamline it and make it easier to use. And um, go ahead, uh, Laura and Steve, if you have some comments, that'd be great. Um, Linda had a couple good comments. This one, this recommendation didn't get a lot of um, verbiage written about it, but it's, it's just an overarching issue, I think, that the board has discussed over the past few years, just um, ha how to make the law easier for people to use, to make it easier for contractors to comply with, for consumers to understand what their protections are. Um, so it's an ongoing project, um, and it's quite comprehensive. So this is just a, a brief summary of what we're trying to accomplish here. Linda. Yep, thank you, this is again. Again, this was less about, this was perhaps less about substance and more about form. I was trying to make this sound very much like, uh, and which it is, to make a, it consumer friendly. It, it, and then by the way, in the law, both our contractors and our consumers are consumers of the law. So the concept was that this would do, I, I have to say that 
I am the other person that was, I'm a, I'm a hangover with Paul from last year's ledge committee. Right. And we had a discussion about this, and this is really near and dear to my heart. I mean, we really need to push hard on this and clean this thing up, but it's a big task. It's a big hill. So, and I mean, I think it's less of a legislative hill than it is an actual hard work hill. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think the work of doing this is gonna be astronomical. I mean, I really do. And, and, but I still think it's, it's a, it's a, it needs to be done, right? So anyway, this is another one of those which, you know, if everybody's okay, it's, it, there's no law thing here. It's more about how does it sound as you're reading it is it's, it's a, it's a, you know, a, not a passionate, but certainly more passionate argument that we need to do this. Right. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Linda, our intent was to include all of your edits. We, we thought they were all fantastic, so I want to clarify that. No, they're, they're, they're great, so that was, our, that was our intent. Yeah, I, I, uh, that, I was at that legislative committee meeting, I think it was April 16th, wasn't it? Yeah, and um, there was an awful lot of discussion from the floor from the public commented and everyone had great ideas. Um, and uh, I think we have the minutes regarding that meeting to, um, and also maybe it was webcast, I don't remember. But um, yeah, it was a great discussion, but it's gonna be a lengthy process. And I, I, all these recommendations <laughs> sound like they're going to be ongoing, so. Breakfast, Paul, if I could chime in. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, hi, everybody, Paul again. Um, I guess I had a question more for you, Steve, on this note. Um, and this is my ignorance of the legislative process. Who, who, who where, when, if, if there were to be a major rewrite, and let's say that's the approach we're gonna take, there's gonna be a major, we're recommending a major rewrite. It's a nice recommendation, but does the legislature come back to us and say, great idea, you do it? Or are we expecting someone in the legislature to say, let's get industry involved and let's let them do it? What's, what's the mechanics? Oh, God, you don't let the legislature do it. Um, um, now, my, my thought was, and, and the board did this a couple decades ago. It, well, the, what you probably want to do is come up with a plan and then break it into bite-sized pieces, and then you have public hearings, like you... you Let's say you ha you're going to tackle enforcement, okay? Then you have public hearings on enforcement. You get buy-in from industry, consumer groups, whatever. Then you spend probably a couple of years, you know, rewriting it over and over again. You bring in, you know, outside consultants. Maybe you contract with someone to help. And then you then you submit a bill to the legislature on that one particular part. Now, Laura and I thought the easiest thing to start with would be what we call board operations and organization. Look at, you know, the board is here, and this is the registrar, and this is the staff, and, and, and do the organization part first. I mean, we've got verbiage in there that is just a waste of space. And as I mentioned before, our law book is bigger than War and Peace, and and it's not nearly as compelling. And there's just there's just a way to, to make it shorter, smaller, and easier. But it's 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 a really long haul because if you change a provision in one section, it could be referenced in other sections. So, you know, it's going to be a long-term process. But I think it's something the board should start next year, and have it on your five-year plan, and look for a goal to maybe have it done by. 2020, you know, that could be your board's long-term goal, but we're gonna have to have the help of the industry and and be a lot of work for Laura, but she's looking for stuff to do. And, you know, that's kind of our, our plan. Okay, that, that's great input, Steve. And so, so, so an outline, this is Paul again, sorry. Um, so you, what, you're recommend, you, what you're advising us is get an outline together as part of next year's strategic planning meeting that would, you know, every 18 months or two years to try and get through a big chunk of the book, and then uh, eventually we have it done. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Nancy Springer. Nancy. Um, so from what I'm hearing, just for clarification, so it appears that we should identify what we think are the top priorities that we need to, to look at 
prioritize it that way, have the stakeholder meetings, get that public input, and then just do piece by piece and have that five-year plan outlined on the priorities and work our way through them? Is it ledge committee that would do that or is the board as a whole? That would be up to the board. It might be something for the ledge committee to, to shepherd. I mean, let me give you an example. Like the home improvement contract law. I mean, it's, again, it's maybe not as big as war and peace, but maybe crime and punishment, which is probably fitting for the home improvement contract law. But um, no one complies with it. It's, it's huge. And it, but we'd never get through the legislature unless we have public hearings and hear from industry what do they need and want, what's happening um, from consumer groups, from the Center for Public Interest Law, what are they willing to allow us to change. So we reach some kind of consensus on how we amend the home improvement contract law so when we go to the legislature there's no opposition. But that in and of itself, the home improvement contract law will be a real sticky wicket might be one of the toughest ones we want to might want to tackle but we'll get lots of input from industry on that so how you organize it whether it's by category or maybe staff goes through and comes up with a wish list and we break it out that way that's what we'll have to the logistics or maybe we break it up by committee maybe the enforcement committee deals with enforcement um, licensing licensing the legislature legislative committee is over overall in charge of the whole thing there's all sorts of ways you could, you could carry it out. I, I was just going to comment. That's, I mean, that is a great idea. You know, I, my thought was over time, perhaps, that we have a person that, you know, we ask to work it, in each committee that we ask to, as, as it is appropriate, if, if that part of the format for the, for the uh, we're talking about this, uh, for you out there, and... Uh, for each um, committee to have their input. It may not be appropriate in a certain year, but maybe over the, the length or the process of however long this takes, we, we get to have somebody within the committee work with the, the chief of um, that committee. I can think of no one more appropriate right now than Nancy Springer. <laughs> Laura. Um, just to comment on this. so. I think as we discussed at the April board meeting, um, there's kind of, you know, two approaches to it. There's one just to reorganize the law to make it easier to follow. Um, and then there's also then substantive changes. So um, I've done, I've gone through and tried to rearrange and work on a draft that way. And then also done a table of contents as to maybe how the law should be outlined. Um, so we could put this on the committee's next agenda and maybe we can discuss it further then on what direction the committee would like to, to go with it. But I think maybe having someone from each committee assigned to it would be helpful. Sounds good. Um, so that is not something we need to vote on either. These are all recommendations, and um, this will be a recommendation that we will, um, if you would uh, put that in your notes and make sure it's on our agenda of things to do for our next meeting. Um, any other comments from the public? Bleachers? Nosebleeds? Nobody back there. All right. Any other board member comments at this time? Uh, Steve. I just want to clarify, it might be good for the chair to direct staff to do the following, just so we're clear that um, you want staff to, to put these edits, edits, recommendation two and three uh, into the report and that you want us to input the, what Linda and Paul <laughs> come up with into the report. I think that's your intent, right? Those edits. Any other comments on that? Um, I think I think that's appropriate at this time, and um, I want to thank Linda and Paul for agreeing to do that, especially on um, such short notice. And um, do you see the need, Laura, to have any other input for two and three? I don't at this time, but. Um, I don't think so. I think we'll accept um, the comments and changes made by Linda Clifford, and yeah, then we'll provide those to the members before the board meeting. All right. And, and again, we'll be sending out the revised draft to all the board members and soliciting input, you know, before the board meeting if you see things. Pastor gave us pages of minor corrections in the report and <coughs> questions, so if you see anything, you know, we well, still have time to do that, yes, is what you're saying. Okay, that absolutely. was my final comment was going to, I did have some, some minor things. Um, so 
I would uh, like to add them as well. And just so you know, don't be worried about charts or formats because we're going to be redoing all, all of that. And, and we were constrained by what the legislature asked, but we'll, we'll deal with that as best we can, keeping with their intent, but trying to make it look as professional and easy to understand as possible. All right, and if everyone's done at this time, I will go ahead and ask for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Second. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, this meeting's adjourned.